Welcome to the service of worship with the Princeton University Chapel community. I am Teresa Timms and I serve as the Associate Dean of Religious Life in the Chapel here at Princeton. Thank you for joining us for this worship service on Sunday, June 7th, 2020. Each summer, we have the privilege of welcoming outstanding preachers to the University Chapel to lead us in worship. The complete list of this summer's preachers can be found at the bottom of the worship bulletin online. We are excited to welcome the Reverend Curlin Richter as our guest preacher this Sunday. Curlin is the rector of St. David's of Wales in Portland, Oregon. Here now, this call to worship. This is the Sunday we stand in awe of our triune God, creator God, author of life, Jesus, Emmanuel, redeemer, God incarnate in flesh with us, Holy Spirit, Ruach, advocate, sustainer. God, the creator, redeemer, and sustainer be with us now and forever. Amen. Our reading this morning is from James. Be doers of the word, not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, then they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves and on going away immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of freedom and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. This kingdom of love is not waiting for this world to be perfect, to get started, and that is such good news. This kingdom of love is not waiting for us to get everything right before we begin. I love this phrase of being doers of the word, and it gets even better. In Greek, the word doer can also be translated maker or poet. Be a poet of the word, not just the audience. Our imperfection and our inadequacy are not barriers to God's call to love in this world. Come on, dear one, God calls to us. We have work to do and poems to write. We have justice to make and love to proclaim. Do not spend this time just looking in the mirror whether it is to admire yourself or criticize yourself, either way, looking in the mirror is not doing the work. It is not being a poet or a maker or a tinkerer. No one of us alone can fix this hot, nasty mess of a world that hundreds of years of racism and violence and white supremacy have brought down. And the good news is that God does not need any individual one of us to be a hero and save the day because saving the world is God's work. But there is also no audience in this kingdom of love. The audience is forgetful. The audience remains amused and unchanged and consumption is not transformation. Nobody runs off to join the circus and then sits in the crowd. The kingdom of love is not a performance, but an invitation. And we are free right now. We look into this perfect law of freedom and know that we are liberated to hold nothing back. We are called to love like it is the end of the world from what it looks like right now, it very well may be. And if this is not the end, then wouldn't you rather say that you loved it all out anyway? That you wrote every poem that was in you and danced it all the way to the end, that you sang to the last note and loved it all out? Wouldn't you love to say that like the woman at the well, we can slip under, sip love under the blisteringly hot and brutal noonday sun? And that like Nicodemus, we can seek out love in the cool of the night. And like the woman weeping and kneeling before Jesus, we can pour out everything we have been saving onto the dusty feet of love. And like the 10th leper, we can come back rejoicing at the miracle of love. And like a thief on the cross next to Jesus, we can go ahead and hope right up until the very last minute that salvation is ours and it will be paradise on a cold and lonely hill because love is there first. In the depth of our pain and in the middle of our brokenness, we are loved by a God who is already here with us. 
And there's absolutely nowhere we can go in this world to be outside of the love of God. There is no place on earth or in time where the invitation of love does not reach out her hand. And so let this faith in love transform your life and spill out into the world. Do the work. A faith that never sees the light of day will be a faith that never reaches out a hand in compassion. It will be a faith that never offers a cool glass of water or a shoulder to cry on. And if your faith is small and weak, if your faith cannot move mountains, then at least let your faith move you. Let your faith move you from your couch to your front yard, from your front yard to your street, from the street to the world. This faith is not simply an intellectual assent to the wildest story ever told or a warm, fuzzy feeling. It is knowing that not only are you deeply beloved, but so is absolutely everything. Faith is knowing in the deepest marrow of your bones that this shattered world that we live in is not the only way to tell this story. It is joining in this work. It is being one more repairer of the breach, one more poet of love. We do this work not in order to make God loves us. God loves us so madly and wildly that nothing we could do or not do will move God one inch in God's love for you, but rather it is God's love and desire for your flourishing that plants a longing to do this work in you. It is God's love that puts that poem in your heart that God wants you to write. It is in our working that we become who we most truly are. It is in our richest, most glorious expression of our lives that we find freedom, where we are liberated by God and healed by God to become fearless people set loose in this world. And our faith cannot be a private and a solitary thing that dwells in our hearts and provides comfort to us and us alone. Our love of this Jesus cannot stay stuck beneath our own ribs and hide behind our lips, but it must be let out to transform a world that is desperate to hear it. Our faith can change our lives and the lives of those around us if we let it out, because a faith that stays stuck in the audience is not a faith worth having. A faith at work Making poetry in the world is a faith that is willing to be crushed and poured out and go recklessly out and never counts the cost. Because this world, this world always counts the cost and hedges its bets and does not leap into the arms of death but pushes the most vulnerable. We have a faith that can move and act and do. We have a faith in the God of a love who is powerful and glorious and bold. We have a faith in the God of love who will call us deeper and deeper in. And without this love, we are drowned and crushed on the banks of the Red Sea. Without God's love, the forces of chaos will push us under. Without God's love, we will die parched and longing in the desert and the rocks that we beat on remain dry rocks. Without God's love, that well that we trudge to in the noonday sun contains just the same old water that has always left us thirsty before. So do not, please for the love of God, do not be the audience of love, but jump in with your whole glorious life. Be a maker and a poet and a crafter with your own hands and with your own life, form something glorious. Because love does not need an audience. Love needs coworkers. So take it up and make it yours, you glorious poet of peace, you tinkerer of justice, composer of empathy, inventor of solidarity, you artist of compassion and crafter of equity, you sculptor of truth, because it is all holy work. And in Jesus, we encounter a love that cannot be killed without rising back up in glory. And resurrection is the ultimate poem. Resurrection is a life that cannot do anything but love and healing that breaks through every wound and leaves scars more blessed than wholeness could ever be. And so instead of a mirror, let us look deep into God's perfect law, the law of freedom, and persevere in the work, never being an audience who forgets, but being poets who do the work, and may our work be blessed. Amen.
Let us pray. How long, O oh God, how long? How long will we stand and kneel at the gates of the city, chanting, screaming, crying, begging for justice? How long will mothers and fathers of black children bury their children? How long will evildoers use their power and batons to bludgeon peacemakers? How long, oh God, how long will your people remain silent in the face of racism and injustice? How long will the hungry be without food and the homeless without shelter? How long will it be before all, all of humanity is free? How long will we continue to deceive ourselves with our righteous words and inactions? How long, oh God, how long? How long, oh God, how long? And when our hearts are broken, and when all hope seems lost, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And we continue with our prayer for Princeton. O oh, eternal God, the source of life and light for all peoples, we pray you would endow this university with your grace and wisdom. Give inspiration and understanding to those who teach and to those who learn. Grant vision to its trustees and administrators, to all who work here and to all who bear her name. Give your guiding spirit of sacrificial courage and loving service. Amen. Hear now this benediction. Be doers of the word and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. My friends, go into the world and be God's people and do God's work. Amen. Thank you.